Hello, hello, everybody. And one of the biggest questions I get asked is, what happens when you mix this shrimp or that shrimp together? What colors do you get? Well, I'm going to attempt to answer those questions for you in this video. Six or seven months ago, I did a video mixed in reds and blue jellies and we're going to revisit that well actually we're going to restart that project on a much bigger scale than what we attempted before so i'll talk about some basic shrimp neocaridinia shrimp genetics and then we'll jump into my mix in reds and blue jelly project and so here we are at the neocaridinia family tree let's take a closer look at all that goes on here so let's first look all the way over on the left. And these are gonna be your snowballs and blue pearls. They are kind of off on their own and they are actually their own subspecies. However, they will still interbreed with all other Neocaridinia. So it's kind of a wild card thing when you mix these with other ones, but I haven't really done a whole lot of it until recently. And I'm still waiting to see the results. So next, let's take a look at the yellows, the oranges, and the greens. Now, I know firsthand these guys are closely related because I have gotten greens from yellows and I have gotten greens from oranges. So what's going on here on this chart? If you look at the top of the yellows, you'll see wild. Then you'll see yellow, and that would just be your typical yellow neocardinia shrimp. Then your yellow neon, and your yellow sakura, and those are basically just how the yellows have been refined better and better. And the same thing with the greens on both sides of the yellow and green. So, or the yellow and orange, you can get green from either one, just like I said before. And you see, you, start, you get your first green, then it gets refined down to green jades. And that's just how and they say you can get them from mixing them together, greens and oranges. Now, I haven't mixed them together on purpose, but I do know I've gotten, like I said, I've gotten greens from oranges and I've gotten greens from yellows in the past. So let's go over and take a look at where the oranges come from real quick. And to do that, we're going to look at the reds a little bit. And reds are an offshoot of oranges according to the Neocaridinia family tree chart. Now, I've never got oranges from my reds, but I get a lot of reds in my oranges. So, again, that makes sense from my personal experience and I can share with you. All right, so now we're going to get into the project we're going to be doing here in a little bit. And that is the reds. So you got reds, they started off. It's just your wild red cherries, a wild shrimp with a reddish tint to it. Then it was improved to Sakura reds and eventually fire reds. And then the best, most beautiful, highest grade red shrimps, they call them painted fire red. Now, if you look over here, the wild cherry, you have red rillies and you have blue rillies. Blue, the blue rillies are the ones that have the red tail, red head, and the blue middle. Well, then you refine those down, and that's how you get blue jellies. So blue jellies and reds are closely related together. So this is the project we're going to try to do. My main goal is to make my own red really line and my own blue red really line without having to buy more shrimp because I'm crazy about adding new shrimp. I don't want to risk anything coming to what I have going on. I'm kind of crazy about that. I want red reallys and blue red reallys, but I don't want to add new shrimp from outside sources. So my goal and the project we're going to be doing here later is to mix my blue jellies and my reds and see if we can get some red reallys and blue red reallys. And I know for a fact we will get some red reallys because I did do a little test in this tank I'll be talking about here in a little bit. And we do have red reallys. Now, I haven't seen any blue reallys, blue red reallys, but we'll see if those pop up eventually. And then all the way over here on the right, we have our chocolates, our blue dreams, and our bloody marys and the uh, shokos. So your chocolates or, or your wild shoko is going to be basically your wild chocolate. And then 
Blue Diamonds and Blue Dreams come from those, and then Bloody Marys are over here on this side of things. Too. So that means your Blue Dreams, your Blues, and Blue Diamonds, and even Black Rose, they all come from this lineage. Now I've had Black Rose, I would throw Blues, and I separated the Blues out, and I would get all these really dark blue shrimp, and then I'd also get Bloody Marys that were in the mix too, and then all kinds of different reallys. So from those black rose coals, I got the black rose, carbon reallys, blue carbon reallys, all the blues and everything, red reallys, you name it. So that part, I don't really understand really genetics all that often, so I'm not gonna try to explain it, other than I know if you mix blue jellies and reds, you will get red reallys. Well, I think what it comes down with black roses, they're a combination of so many different things that anything over here on the right side is a possibility. <laughs> That's what that means. So in the closing of the shrimp genetic talk part of this, I want to make sure it's clear that the best way to keep your lines the best way possible is to keep your color separated. neo are not like Caridinia, and you don't get all kinds of cool things usually when you mix colors. Now, if you do want to mix colors, I mean, we wouldn't find new stuff. We wouldn't find out new things if, unless we mixed some colors and did some experimentation. So if you're not worried about sacrificing quality and doing some experiment, then by all means, mix different colors. And remember, if you mix groups with different colors, you're better off. The closer they are in this family tree, the better luck you're going to have mixing them and having results. Now, you're probably still going to have a bunch of wilds stuff even if you mix ones that are right close together but your chances of having something cool happen and having something that you know creating your own thing is more likely a possibility in my opinion so again i cannot stress this enough mixing colors always 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 degrades quality if you want the best quality never mix colors but if you want to try new things and have different things and see the possibilities that are out there, then by all means, do some experimentation. It's a lot of fun. And you can even do stuff on purpose, like we're gonna try to do here. So let's see if we can make some red reallys and possibly some blue red reallys. That would be awesome. So this is the tank where I started my project out. I put it like 10 or 15 reds and 10 or 15 blue jellies in here. But this is a guppy project tank. And while I have the most healthy guppies I've had in years, <laughs> I have bombed them, bombed them, bombed them with medication. Keep them this way. So, what that means is the shrimp don't like it. And I've seen like one red shrimp in here. That's the only shrimp I've seen in here. So let's go see what we're gonna try with this project now. This is my 40 gallon. I threw in a whole bunch of just mixed random kind of coals, not really coals into here. Well, this tank used to be my yellow shrimp line and my yellow shrimp just kind of, they didn't die. They just quit breeding. They hit some kind of genetic wall. And so, so just this tank just being for plecos and my jungle valve farm, I have, I put these reds in here. So the first thing I want to do, you can still see some yellows, but not a lot. But I also have put a couple. I literally put like two or three blue jellies in here a while back. And if you look real close, there's some in here. There's some reallys in here. I saw, yeah, there it is. There's a buried kind of really looking one right there. There's still some yellowish looking ones. There's some wild ones in here from the reds and the yellows mixing together. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bait these shrimp out and I'm not gonna call super hard, but I'm gonna try to get all the wilds and yellows that are left in here out that I can easily catch. And if there's any red relays that come across, we'll leave those in there. And this tank is just a blue jelly farm right now, moss and blue jelly farm. Believe me, there's lots and lots of blue jellies in here. We're gonna bait some of these guys out. We're gonna, we're gonna get about 30, 30 blue jellies out of this tank. And we're gonna, after we get all the 
we'll do some calling in that red tank and we're going to get some blue jellies out of here and start our project okay so the time lapse letting these guys gather up and look at all these super red bristle nose pluckos gathering up i got a lot of, i got rid of a lot of them this year <laughs> but let me tell you catching these guys out of here is a horrific disaster now if you i don't know if you can see it in the time lapse but there are a few blue jellies in here like i was talking about earlier and I'm just going through and picking out the, oh, there's a blue. If you look real close right there in the bottom left corner, you can see a blue jelly. Oh, yeah, I seen him. If you look really close and pause it, if you glance in there super close, you'll be able to find him. But there's a, there's at least two or three in there and the really are in there. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that they're from that guy or a couple of them. I think there's a male and a female that I saw in there. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this. There's a lot of red shrimp in here, wow. So I didn't get it called down quite perfect, but it is a whole lot better. Let's take a look at what we got out. Yeah, so there are some red ones in here that actually ended up in here, but there's, a, there's like a carbon really, a couple of those that I found, kind of weird looking. I wasn't expecting. But there's a couple of them right there. And you can see, I'm talking about how these yellows, when they mix with the red, they've regressed to green. They're greenish tinted, I guess you could say. And then you got the wilds, of course. So that's kind of interesting. Let's put them in the Skittles tank. And here we go, here we go. Now, that, I didn't get all the bad ones out of that thing, like I said, but I got a whole lot. And I'll keep working on, I'll keep working on it more and more. There's a lot of red. You see, a lot of those are back stripes. That's how the green jades end up. A lot of the green jades have back stripes. From the yellow golden backs, the yellows. Kind of cool. All right, let's get back to mixing these blue jellies and reds. All right, so we got some blue jellies out in this tank. And we're gonna get a random scoop of them and we're gonna throw them in there in that mixed red tank. And here are the blue jellies, the random scoops of blue jellies. There's a couple buried ones. There's a few that ain't so great, but that's all right because this is just a mix. And now the remnants of that over here, I don't want to get too many of them out because when the blue jet, when I'm confident my new blue jelly pond is going good, then most of these guys are going to be in there and they'll be gone over with a fine tooth comb before they get added into the pond. That's the future of this tank. So let's put these blue jellies in here with all these reds. This ought to get us some more red reallys for sure because when I was going through and getting the coals out, I definitely found I definitely did find also some red reallys, but I also found two or three of the original blue jellies that I put in here just to see what would happen. And sure enough, if you look really hard and close, you will find a handful of blue or red reallys. So it is going to happen and I'm super excited about it. This will be cool. Now we'll keep on. I'll check in every three to six months on this tank and this project. And hopefully we'll be seeing more and more red reallys. And then what we will do, we'll pick out the red reallys that end up in here. There's already some, we saw that buried one earlier. And we will start a new tank for just those red reallys. Or if we see any of the blue red reallys, we'll do the same for those as well. And we're gonna, we're gonna start another tank for the reallys that pop up. And then from that point, 
then then we can refine them and call them down and make them better and better so hopefully this works out i think it'll be a fun experiment i know we'll get red rillies but how difficult and how long of this of a process this will be before we have a nice red really line that should be fun to find out so thank you guys for watching bye